I just made it up. Anyway, um, it's an honor and a privilege to be here today. I want to thank you folks for uh, being here, especially that this is my hometown of New York. It, yes, absolutely. For those of you who don't know me, it was right here in New York where I began my career and I learned how to speak three languages fluently. I speak Brooklyn, Long Island, and New York. Okay? Yes, actually, you've heard of English as a second language? It's not even my first language. Uh, a lot of people come to my workshops, and after my workshops, they say to themselves, what the heck was he talking about? They're scratching their heads. You know, it's that Italian thing, that crazy loud Italian from New York. But the one thing they do when they leave my sessions is that they always say that I received a number of aha moments. And I will promise you today, and I will ask you today, and I will encourage you today to focus on those aha moments. You see, you're not going to retain everything that we offer you in this next two days. But the aha moments are the ones you need to go back to the field with, and you need to go back to your territory with, and those will make a difference. When Erica and Dan, in a very weak moment, asked me to come out and speak to you, <laughs> I thought hard and long and, and for a while about what I was going to speak to you about. And I kept coming back to the very same thing. I kept coming back to you. I kept coming back to each of you individually. And what I kept coming back to was that the contributions that all of you make to this industry are enormous. I kept coming back to the impact you make on so many lives. And I kept coming back to the one most important thing in this room, you. You, Dan, and you, Bill, and you, Cindy, and you, Nancy. I kept coming back to you because every day you impact communities. You impact your readers. You impact your clients, your employees, your colleagues, your friends, and most importantly, you impact your families. You have great responsibility and you count. You count. You make a difference. You have an enormous impact, and you need to know that, and you need to live that, and you need to believe that. So where do we begin? So where do we begin? First thing I want you to do is everybody stand up. And by the way, don't you hate motivational speakers that ask you to do things? Okay, so everybody's going to change, take your, not a mover, no, I'm not going to ask you to do anything crazy. All I want you to do is look down at your shoes. That's it, that's it. Look down at your shoes, and we're not staring at your shoes back there. And what I want you to do is just for one minute, think about the fact that you are in three different pairs of shoes right now. You're in the shoes of the person you used to be, you're in the shoes of the person you are, and you're in the shoes of the person you want to be. You can sit. I know some of you had a lot to eat for lunch and you probably couldn't even see your shoes. Uh, look at me who's talking. I got a body by Linguini. A balanced diet to me is chocolate in each hand. That was a joke, by the way. That was a joke. Very little, obviously. Okay, thank you, Bill. After lunch, tough crowd after lunch, you know what I'm talking about. So who do you want to be? Who do you want to be, Dan? Who do you want to be, Bruce? Who do you want to be? That's the decision. You know, I love the 10 smallest words in the English dictionary, Ruth. You know what they are? Listen to this, 10 smallest words in the English dictionary. If it is to be, it is up to me. Two letters, 10 words, says a whole lot, doesn't it? This is all about you. It's all about how you think. I want you to think for a moment. What you think you become. So what are we going to talk about today? We're going to talk about that eight pound mass above your neck. 
that eight pound mass above your neck is second, everything else is second to that eight pound mass above your neck because what you think you become, that might be an aha moment for you. What you think is what you become. Your inner voice is powerful. Your inner voice guides you to where you want to be. What you think you become. It's so critical to think that way. Folks, what you think dictates what you believe. And what you believe dictates who you are. And I know what you're saying. You know, he's going to start with all that attitude stuff. And you know, we live in the 21st century, and I was talking to Jim Bush, one of the smartest mans on the earth. And I was saying to Jim, you know, about attitude, and he says, yeah, but today in the 21st century, people want things now. They don't want fluff. They want digital stuff. Give me something I can talk about, tangible stuff. Not fluff, attitude, you know, how you think, how you feel. How you think and how you feel is who you are, and the sooner you realize that, the better you're going to be. A little boy goes up to his grandfather, and he says, Grandpa, how do you feel about the things that are going on in the world? It's pretty crazy, isn't it? And the grandfather says, yes, I feel like there are wolves fighting inside my heart. One wolf is fighting for anger and, and, and uh, hatred. And the other wolf is fighting for love and forgiveness. And the little boy says to the grandfather, so which one will win, Grandpa? And he says, the one I feed. That's kind of the way life is. The one I feed, because what you feed is what you grow. I want you every day to think about your brain as this fertile ground. And I want you to think about your brain and every day a thought that you have is like a seed. Think about this for a minute. And that seed you plant in that fertile ground grows. And if you plant crab apples, don't expect to harvest golden delicious. <laughs> Let me say that again for impact because it's so important. Your mind is fertile. Your thoughts are like seeds. You plant a seed in your mind. If you plant a crab apple, you won't get golden delicious. Your thoughts are the fruit of what you sow. So think about it and understand that to be true. You know, there is really little difference. If I look to the back of the room and I say those two Ladies in the back are very much the same as the two people up here. There is little difference between people, but that little difference makes an enormous difference. That little difference is attitude. And the big difference is whether that attitude is positive or negative. See, something very small makes a big difference in life. William James said, the greatest discovery of this generation is that if we alter our attitude, we can change our life. If we alter our attitude, we can change our life. What most people don't understand is that when you change and alter your attitude, you not only impact your happiness, you not only impact your success, you impact the happiness and success of everybody around you. Everybody around you, you touch and you impact when you alter your attitude. Not too long ago, I checked into a hotel and I had a bellman. And he was walking up with me and he said, how you doing, sir? I said, I'm doing great. And he says, I said, how you doing? And he said, couldn't be better. And I said, great, you seem like you're in a really good mood. He said, I just got back from a vacation. I just spent some time with my grandchildren, and I am in the best mood of my life. And I said, it seems that way. He says to me, every day above ground to me is the greatest day in the world. <laughs> you know, I went back to my room that night, and I started thinking, wow, he made me feel good. There was an impact he made. So today I'm going to talk to you about attitude, and I'm going to talk about the things that drive your attitude. 
and I'm going to make it simple for you. 